You are now tuned into Hip Hop BC Before Corporate. I am your host, Princess Lanita, and we're going to get right back into the graffiti elements with our special guest, Staff 161, and our host, Cool Cloud. Stay tuned to Hip Hop BC Before Corporate. Yes indeed, yes indeed, yes sir. This is Cool Cow, the original Sarge, aka Spec One, INDs, X Fandom, and the legendary because of this man right here, Ebony Duke, GC. Now what does GC stand for? Graffiti Click. Since 70, early 73. Now, what we have? 1970. Well, that's what I got. That's what you put me in. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. we got two past one. Spring of 1970s when the Ebony Dukes became. I got you. I got you. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. I got two past one. Staff, oh, yeah. one, six, seven. First graffiti crew outside of Brooklyn. Yes, yes it's first yes. graffiti crew outside of Brooklyn. Yes. yes, it did. Now, I give the X Vandals was the number one crew at, as far as starting first. But the Ebony Dukes became. The first graffiti crew organization outside of Brooklyn. Yes, indeed. And I give Brooklyn props. We have our man, Dynamite 161. To the side, chilling. We already did him. It's Checker 170. He's important to Do you, Charlie? Do you, Charlie? Do you, Charlie? Do you, Charlie? Well, listen. At this time, we do the old time of day in the Bronx where all this maturity. At. I'm not going to say it started here. I know it started in Washington Heights, but this man is the first man to do a character. He had the cat. I remember the piece. I remember when he did it. I remember when we saw it. I became a member when he saw me on the train. Now, today. hold on. It's hold today. On. Eddie, let me finish. Let me finish. All right. A character on the train. That's what I just said. On the train. But anyway. We did characters on the street. Yes. He was the first gang members that did colors on the train. Right. Well, he was the first one. Now, I met him from, he doesn't even remember this. I had big afro with big ass, big glasses. But I was riding on the train one day, and he was with his crew. Three members of, two members of, Super Slick 156 and King Cool 156. He saw me riding, and he said, what do you, what do, you do? I was with my man. He was a toy. I was a semi-toy. I just started getting up a little bit of inside. He invited me to the Ebony Dukes Clubhouse. We went to a roof in the Bronx. I've never been there before, scared to death, because I was a nerd, but this is Staff 161. He went there and told us we were down, we tagged that, that roof, and ever since then, he's been an icon. Well, he's been an icon before me, but anyway, we have him right here today, and I'm going to ask you a couple questions real quick, ask Topaz a couple questions, and ask my man Dynamite. Me and Dynamite go back, Dynamite. Give me a pound with my hands in the air. Come on, man. You're fucking the film up. You gotta be careful with Danny. Danny is slow to move on. He sees a hand up. Yeah, okay. Listen, Danny, 
aka Dr. Soul. Dr. Dynamite Soul. first. Dr. Was Soul Di what exactly? Dynamite 161. There you first. go. There you go. The 161 was there first. Staff, Dynamite 161. Staff is taking over the show. Dr. Soul. 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 Dr. Soul. Listen. Hey, yes. I know him as Eddie. Yo, Staff 161. Yeah. And you start, Mr. Eddie 161. Because it was nothing to say 130, but I, I know all that. But anyway. Okay. Hey, when did you first not hit the streets, but decide to put your tag? That's okay. Fly on the streets. On the train. Ball Molly dressed in. On the train. Second one, like first? Why are you watching that female? Yes. Hey, what we do, even though we old timers, <laughs> man, we still got to <laughs> This is real. to see that you know, yo, sex. Yo, uh -huh. This is real. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. it, it rolls. Like <laughs> on, on the outside, on the inside, and then outside with something. Okay, Tell me that's that. interconnected with this brother right okay. here. Very good. Yeah. Very we know him as daddy from the U.S. Plains Boys. Right. right? That's what we basically was. Yo, Tobaz right here. What, what, what was we? The human place boys, right? But we also was gang members as well. You know what I'm saying? What I, gangs you belong to? I belong to the Ghetto Brothers. Okay. That's the human place boys was a gang too. Yeah. Also the Black Scorpions. Yeah. It's also the human place boys. All right. How about the Black Spades? Which was the I was a Black Spade. Twenty second division. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, and Super Slick 15 since with Savage Skull. Now you see, you see now all of us on the same block, yes. on the same block, and we part of different gangs and stuff like that. This unity, right? So I realized, you know, see, tagging, adding on walls, right. was just part of the, the Fort Apache section of the Bronx. Right. That part was the culture. Yeah, it was just part of That's it. what we did. It was right? on the street. We didn't have to see anybody from Washington Heights tag anything like that. Right. Tags writing was all over our community. Right. Now, even this brother right here and this brother, they was writing in people's refrigerators. <laughs> uh, now, remember that situation when you wrote in that chick's refrigerator, man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wrote in somebody's that's refrigerator. Now that's, now, that's off the chart. Now, you write it in somebody's refrigerator. But, but, see, the thing is, is that um, the Florida Patty section of the Bronx, Bronx was more or less a rundown area. You know, this would be considered part of the Fort Apache section of the Bronx now, right? But not as little house on the prairie. But nonetheless, right? It was a rundown area, and rundown uh, areas associated with writings on walls. And so we always seen writings on the walls before actually trains or whatever people were talking about. You know what I'm saying? Writings on the, writings on walls in our community was a common thing, right? So this brother here was going to the same school. Right? And we have to leave now. I have to leave my community and, and more or less commute to school now. So I'm taking now uh, the 2 and the 5 train to 3rd Avenue and catching the, uh, the 3rd Avenue L. Right. Now, when it's now let me say this about the 3rd Avenue L. When it still exists. Let me, yeah. Pop. Hey, good point when it still exists. Now, if you ain't tag on the 3rd Avenue L, you can't consider yourself a pioneer. Straight cheese. You had, you had to have. If you didn't have your tag on the Third Avenue L, how are you going to say you were pioneer? That was a major line back then, right? And that line went right through the hood. All the whole Third oh, Avenue the whole way to the road. All mainly, mainly hood areas. And if you, you had to get tagged. So if your tag wasn't on the Third Avenue L, then you, you're not really a pioneer, original pioneer. You know, that first generation writer. And definitely all the Ebony Dukes was up on the on the Third Avenue yes, L. AJ had to pop the bottom of the third album. Yes, he did. You had to take the third album to go to Katona Pool. Yeah, exactly. He'll get Katona Pool. Exactly. Now, what made you start writing, though? What made you put your name? And how'd you get the name Stab? Where'd you get that from? Well, here's the thing, right? I was writing Mr. Ed before I was writing Stab on the sixth right. Now, Mr. Ed came from a sitcom. The TV sitcom. show. I got yeah, you. Right. The sitcom. Right, they call it, right? right. About the talking horse, yeah. Talking horse. horse is a horse, of course, of course. I'm a talking horse, of course, unless, of course, they're talking horse. The it's famous, famous Mr. Ed. Ed. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yo, now you see that sitcom right there? That was an annoying thing for me because my name is Ed. That's right. my couple, right? Yeah. Right? So, when I'm in grade school, all these kids is like, you know, ripping me about a Mr. Ed and uh uh uh. uh 
you know, the talk, they all thought it was a funny show. So, I made light of it, and I started packing this to end. And I, could, and I started drawing. I was always somebody that could draw certain figures, you know what I'm saying? I always had a little bit of, what you say, untrained art talent. Some people can do things naturally. So, that's why I added that component to graffiti writing, right? Um, characters and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not so much for the art reasons, right? But mainly as a way to bring attention to the tag. The Grim Reaper and all that, with the wave yard, the hand coming up from yes, the wave yard, yes, the spray can, man. that was all an expression, that. right? Right? Or, or a way to bring attention to the tag. Yes. You gotta bring attention to the tag. There you go. Yeah. So, that's why I more or less started using characters. Actually, this is the spokesman for the FBI. I got you, right? He's the spokesman for the Ebony Dukes VC right here. I got you. Basically, we're tagging around the block around the neighborhood. We even started practicing more pieces on the church across the street. That's how we all started. Okay. But then we decided, you know what, we're going to take all the wow. So we decided to take all the gangs that was in our neighborhood, bring them together under this one heading called the Ebony Deuce GC, and basically take over New York City Refuge. That was the decision. That day. That's how we decided to go to the trains and monopolize New York City, period. That's what we decided to do. That's because originally we didn't even want people outside of your place to be Ebony Deuce. Wow. Actually, the original Ebony Deuce resented people who wasn't from our block that became Ebony Deuce. But we decided, okay, we, if we're going to take over the city, if we're going to take over graffiti, we're going to have to get guys other than ourselves to do this with us. I'll be right back. Y'all keep it up. Well, we don't keep it up. Yeah. I just want to check out this dude with this mean can control over here. If you can just pan the camera over there and look at that can control right there on the wall. All right? Now that's basically that's basically what you call the, the talent or, or the skill that graffiti writing basically brought about. Can control. You know what I'm saying? We draw like that. That's what the street artists is picked up. The mainstream art world picked up hand control from us. And can control came from the taggers and so forth, piecing and so forth, wild style characters and so forth like that. No doubt. Yeah, let's go back over here and see Kyle over here. No doubt. So, yo, so I just wanted to get that part in about the can control. Yo, yeah. did you just say, uh, so pass one? First of all, we honored to be with us with Spec One Cool Cow, because Spec One is the do. Plus, he's Cool Cow, the original Star Child. Cool Cow is one of the original hip hop pioneers. I'm not talking about second generation, I'm talking about original hip hop pioneers. And we love the work that he's doing, and we honor him, and we're going to try to help him any way we can Thank you, to give forth his message. Thank you. Now, Staff decided to watch what that artist was doing, which was man cool. Let's talk to Topaz One. Topaz One is an original member of Ebony Deuce. Before it was a whole squad, the way took over the Bronx. Him, Staff, and AJ. And Dynamite, Dr. Super Soul. Slick. Right, there were five of us today. I can tell you today. Me, Staff, Oh, I'll say me, Paul, Danny, Ed, and Adam, we were standing on the stoop. Exactly. And we looked up at the trains and we said, you know what? We can do this. Oh, we can take this over. Wow. <laughs> and Ed said, Ebony Dukes, we're going to be the Ebony Dukes. Because Danny's uncle was in the original Ebony Dukes street gang from the 1940s and all. Wow. Classic. So, Ed got permission from Danny's uncle to use the name as a graffiti group. Because they were already a gang from the 1940s. But we got permission from one of the original gang members, Bertie, who passed away, to use that for our graffiti group. And that's how we decided on the Ebony Dukes as a name. And that day, the five of us decided that we're going to do this. And we started getting everybody together in the neighborhood that was already either in gangs or part of the Hewitt Place Boys or part of the Black Scorpions or whatever gang we knew them from because we had everybody in our neighborhood and we decided to unite. I would say by the end of the first day we probably had 35, 40 guys on day one. Wow. So let me ask you a question. Once you guys decided to do this, what made you branch out to the train? Because you were observing the train? 
Understood. How did you feel about you doing that? Well, I'll tell you, we, we saw people like Smith 220. Yes, sir. Michael, yes, sir. Yeah. And his name was everywhere. Yes, sir. And we were like, you know what? Instead of idolizing Super Cool, we could see our name. Because what, what, what had, what we had, as you know, we had our roof. The roof was our base. So we would stand up on the roof and we would watch the train go by. Right, right, right. Every day we'd be up there just watching the train go by. Yeah. And then we decided we're going to watch the train for our names to go by. <laughs> so we went to the roof every day and we just watched and wait for our names. So that's what it's about. You see your name go by. Exactly. Right. We wanted to see our names go Perfect. by. Perfect. Perfect. And that's what we did every day. Now we had our own writer's corner on you. Right. And that's where, you, that's where we took you. Yes. I went there, my own personal story, it's not about me right now, but how I got into the heavy news was I met Stan, super slick and good on 56 Lover, on the train. I'm tagging my name. I was a semi joint. I just started getting up in the inside. And Stan came to me. I thought he was going to rob me because I was a crazy nerd back then. But he said, Yo, you want to get the proof? Of course, I said, yeah. He tagged his name. And I saw T.E.D. with the hat and the G-Z. I already knew what it was. I'm a graffiti nut. So, we got off the train, went to this tenement, walked up mad step to a roof. I could have got thrown off. But Stan said, can I get a baby? He said, tag your name. I tagged my name. And ever since then, I was in every two. Now, I went back to junior high school that Monday. I was in ninth grade, and I started checking in the bathroom. There's a bathroom where you want to get staircases. And Common One came to me, Ajax came to me, and Bam came to me. How'd you get in that video? Because Staff put me in it. And that's how I met Staff. And his brother Ajax. But that's a whole other story, which we're not going to get to right now. But anyway, so what are you doing right now? Am I doing? Yes, sir. I can't tell you. No. Tell us about the legal part. The stuff you were talking about. I know you turn around. Let's get back to the other. That's classic. Explain that to us. Okay, a couple of years ago, we wanted to do a movie about the creation of hip hop. Gangs, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, the director Shan Nicholson we got together most of the, uh, a lot of the gang leaders back in the day, like Blacks from the Savage Girls, the Assault, and so on, Nomads, uh, just different gang leaders and gang members, and actually of the Ghetto Brothers, because the Ghetto Brothers found a way to bring peace. It was a peace treaty that was made between the gangs because of uh, one gang member being killed. Yes. His name was uh, Black Benji. Yes, Black Benji. He yes. was a peacemaker from the community. Actually, yes. he was a... The Ghetto Brothers took what was warlords and they made like a peace war. Now, Black Benji went to broker peace between some gangs and was killed in the process. So, because of that, Roddy Charlie and Yellow Benji decided to get the Bronx gangs together and make a peace treaty to try to stop the violence because we were tired of seeing people getting killed. killed. Right, exactly. We were tired of seeing, you know, on the funeral at the funeral at the funeral at the funeral at the funeral, at the funeral just kind of like waiting for your turn almost. Right. When is my turn going to be to die? Yeah. Because that's just the way the community was going these brothers had enough courage and love to say, okay, we need to find a way to stop this. So they came together and they had gangs actually sign an official paper saying that they would stop killing each other. And it actually worked. And after that, guys like Cool Herc, Star Child, Starsky, you can go on and on and on with the list of guys that were birthed out of that movement that that came up with their own talents, uh, microphone talents, DJ skills, break dancing skills. Break dancing, right. Because without the gangs having peace, this would have never happened. Like, why? Be because crazy. the gangs ran the streets. Yes, yes. It's not like they like a war zone. It was a war zone. Was a war zone. People say like, no, it was a war zone. Real PTSD. You all guys that. worry about the bloods and the crips right now. But when we came up, it, Come on, like man. I said, we're talking about thousands and thousands Yo, and thousands was, of guys. It's absolutely crazy. You know, it was it was it was a different level of gang than they have today. Yes. But anyway, the peace treaty came, and like I said, out of that peace, guys start finding their talents and abilities in other areas. Like guys who used to be starving people found out they, they could actually oh, guys that used to be, you know, gang banging found out they could actually take a microphone 
and it's a lot. Yeah. Guys that you know used to be, you know, stomping people, they found out they can grow. I can spin records. So hip hop didn't become, you know, because one guy, hip hop became thousands of gang members throughout New York City, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, you name it. Went from gang banging to music, to doing music and dancing. Thank you very much. Yo, okay. You hear? That's the whole point of this show. Hip hop BC before corporate. When it came from where we are right now, look around here, it was the Bronx, and there was nothing going on but problems. And these guys decided to change their movement and move on to something creative in the guise of peace. So they made peace. And Challenge the engine to a whole different world. This is classic. I mean, I love you. Thank you very much. Yo, that's very good. Thank you. Dynamite. This is Dynamite 161. My man. Elias Dr. Soul. Boy. What? My man. Elias Dr. Soul. Boy. What made you first start putting your name on the on train? Well, we all started in the 70s. We've seen people's name on the trains. We wanted to be a part of it. Well, before that, Daddy, you seen writings in your block, in your community. It was nothing but tags. Graffiti writing is something that is part of rundown, elaborated, poverty-stricken area. It's part of urban blight. That's what you see graffiti writing. That's basically. It's, it's, it's associated with. So the Fort Apache section of the Bronx was the worst ghetto, slum, drug infested, gang concentrated area in New York City history. Going from the, the street culture to your trace. Now, I've seen you like many times. I met you one day on East Trey Street. You don't remember this. Downstairs, not before you get to the platform, me and you met. Me and you met. And I asked you, what you write? And you said, what you write? I said, spec one. And you said, that it might. No, really, this is a true story. I know you don't remember. I have an extra memory from back in the day. But I saw what you did, you were prolific at it. Now, you expressed yourself and you went and you moved on. What made you stop? Well, I started and what year did it happen? I started in 1970. What made me stop was I was getting too old for it, and there was a lot of time if you get busted for it or a big crime. Yeah. The cutoff age, the cutoff age for graffiti writing was between the ages of eight and sixteen. You have older writers like Stay High 149, he's like 20. You know what I'm saying? But that was unusual. So the cutoff age was 16. Why 16? Because basically, under 16, you don't get a record for it. But if you're 16 and older, you get a record. So, as that was just the policy, the early, the first generation taggers, basically most of them, 16, 17, no, they were retired. Right. So, I guess, how old were you when you stopped? I was about, um, 15, 16, 17. Okay. What are you doing today? Right now. Right now, we came around here to do masterpieces on the wall. And to meet other people who we never met before. Yes. Back one. He's a guy, he's a nice guy. Everybody here is nice because uh, we are graphic artists and we're pioneer graphic artists. We can't, we can't stay for too much longer because we got to go. Let me finish with your boy and we'll leave. Okay, yeah, got you. Yeah, all right. That's it. That's he deserves yeah, everything. We got to go see Charmin 65. Yes, we going to. You know, and finally recognizing Charmin 65. Charmin 65 is, is basically the queen of graphic okay, right. Okay, we have, the we have, reason we that being, a, even though Barber 62, Eva 62, it was there, Espat 169 was there, but yeah, those are the early female taggers, you know what I'm saying, and I had a few white girls that were in the Ebony Dukes, uh, uh, Kivu, 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 Kivu
But anyway, let me finish this real quick. You know what, Dynamite? It's a pleasure to have you, man. You're a legend in the game, in the early game. My man Topaz, we talk all the time on Facebook. He's a legend in the game. He held the evidence down because of reasons out of his control. That's not for the camera to know. But this man right here invented it. Stayed with him and his brother AJ once again. All blessings and salute to his brother Adam. AJ once again. This has been Hip Hop BC. Before Corbin, before the world took over, didn't pay us and bragged about what they invented. These guys right here are legends. I am Point Cow because I'm so AKA Spec One, INDs, and the Emmy Dukes all day. Love y'all.